Okay. So we've got this problem of nonlinear non clearance, which is a big problem with this drug. So just think about it. As concentration increases, our intrinsic clearance starts to decrease. If our clearance is decreasing with concentration, what's going to happen? Our clearance will decrease with concentration. If our clearance is decreasing as the concentration increases, this causes the concentration to go up even more. So you can see that it becomes a vicious cycle which causes there to be logarithmic increases in concentration with just small increases in dose or in concentration. So it makes it really tough. Okay, so what does this mean for dosing? It means that your CSS average is going to rise exponentially with small changes in dose. It also means your half-life will increase again exponentially exponentially with um, increase small increases in dose it will not be a linear so we can't just put our dose rate over uh, the concentration that we get to make a proportion like we do with other drugs um, because remember that assumes that bioavailability and clearance remain constant and they won't in this case because clearance is constantly changing with concentration so you can see that makes it tricky all right, so let's talk about dosing from the beginning. First, we need to talk about do loading dose. If a patient, we need to talk about if a patient's already receiving phenytoin, so if they already have some phenytoin on board and we have to do a small loading dose to get them into the therapeutic range, or if we have to stop, start with somebody that has no phenytoin on board and we have to increase them into the therapeutic range right away. Um, this loading dose is based upon the... Um, total body weight of a patient unless they are obese and then we use these this equation below which is really just a guesstimate to determine um, a, a dosing weight for a patient that is obese um, it's not really well studied but it's probably better than using total body weight because we would probably overdose an obese patient all right, so giving a loading dose or a mini load booster is the same as any other drug. We would start with a volume of distribution, which remember is 0 0.65, 0 0.7 liters per kilogram. Um, and we would multiply that times our target and subtract any drug that's already on board. So if they already have five milligrams per liter on board, we, su we would subtract that from whatever we're trying to reach to get our loading dose. And then you would have to worry about bioavailability and salt form, depending on if you're giving it IV, you don't have to worry about bioavailability, but you would have to worry about salt form in most cases, unless you're giving the sodium, the, the phenytoin sodium. So it's a simple plug and chug, just like any other drug. So if you have a 65 kilogram non-obese patient, um, <clears throat> we would just multiply 65 kilograms times 0.75 liters per kilogram if they had no drug on board and we wanted to hit right in the middle of the therapeutic range we would just uh, multiply that times 15 milligrams per liter the liters would cancel and you'd have milligrams um, and then if you're giving it orally you would have to be concerned about um, bioavailability which is 0.95 and the salt form, which is 0.92 for sodium phenytoin. Um, okay, so that's pretty simple, pretty straightforward for, um, for calculating a loading dose. If you're giving an IV, you would just have to worry not about the bioavailability, but just the salt form portion, because it is given as a sodium salt IV as well. Usually it's around a gram in most patients is about a gram and if you realize you can only give it 50 milligrams per minute so that's 100 milligrams every two minutes so if you're, it's going to take 20 minutes to get the loading dose in so you can see why you have to be uh, careful and if your patient's seizing you don't want to wait 20 minutes to get the seizures under control that's why you give a more um, a faster acting agent that you can load more quickly um, first usually for status epilepticus how long does it take to get to the peak after a single dose? This actually will change again because of the nonlinearity. Um, 
so it takes longer to get to the peak with an increased dose so this low solubility may causes a prolonged time to peak so if you get 400 milligrams at one time it's going to take about eight hours to get to the peak concentration um, if it's 800 or 1600 at one time although we rarely give this much although a loading dose you might give 800 or a thousand it's going to take a while until you reach the um, the peak concentration of the drug so in order to peak to increase the peak concentration and decrease the time required to achieve a peak you need to divide the doses um, so even if you're giving a gram you don't want to give more than 400 milligrams per administration time so you need to separate out the dosing if you're giving an oral load we call that maintenance dosing is really tricky <laughs> the package insert says you give five milligrams per kilogram per day for most people those of you that work in pharmacies you probably know if you dispense phenytoin probably most people get 300 milligrams a day of sodium phenytoin orally usually the dilantin capsules I would guess for there's a study done a while ago that shows that if you give 300 milligrams per day to the whole population um, only about 29 percent of these will be in the therapeutic range only if less than a third will be in the therapeutic range um, and more than half of them will be underdosed and 16 of them will be overdosed so again there's a you, there's a lot of interpatient variability in the pharmacokinetics of phenytoin which makes sense especially with the nonlinearity so you can't just give 300 milligrams uh, a day and assume you're okay. Um, there are lots of drug interactions that occur with this drug that increase and decrease the intrinsic clearance. Phenytoin itself is an enzyme inducer um, of 3A4 and um, I think it might, well I don't know, we'll get to that in a minute. I don't want to tell you the wrong thing. Um, <clears throat> phenobarbital, carbamazepine, CBZ is carbamazepine, ethanol, so if you drink as well, um, and pregnancy will all increase the intrinsic clearance of phenytoin and cimetidine valproic acid so VPA is valproic acid and um, and isoniazide isoniazid will all decrease the intrinsic clearance the anti-epileptics are notoriously known well, I shouldn't say notorious but they are known to increase enzyme activity other than valproic acid. Valproic acid is the only one that does not. It actually inhibits enzyme activity. So your initial maintenance dose could be five milligrams per kilogram per day. But remember this is how we determine maintenance doses by using our jelly equation. And um, so how do we determine clearance in this case if clearance is constantly changing with with uh, clearance is changing with concentration because of this nonlinearity here. Um, so what we usually do is just start with five milligrams per kilogram per day, um, following the PD PDR, the insert, uh, the package insert recommendations. Um, so this is what we normally do with patients after we have information is we say if clear so see, we take our jelly equation and if clearance and bioavailability have remained constant then we can say that CSS average is, a, is approximate or is proportional to dose rate and we can set up this proportion but obviously with phenytoin have clear is clearance remaining constant no because intrinsic clearance is constantly changing with concentration so we cannot use that approach so what we do is we say the rate of drug loss is equivalent to the rate of drug administration at steady state at steady state drug in and drug out are in equilibrium so the amount of drug removed per day is equal to the rate of administration at steady state so R is going to be equal to the rate of administration in milligrams per day or our daily dose and we're going to set that equivalent 
to the rate of drug loss, um, which is uh, Vmax over KM plus C times C. Obviously, if we know how much drug is being given per day, we can we can put R in there, or or I mean, we're trying to solve for R because we're trying to figure out our new dose rate, right? But we don't know Vmax or KM, do we? So what we can do is start with a population Vmax or a population KM. As you can see here, some this is a little bit of data that has been put together. So we know that adults with normal renal clearance and liver function have a Vmax of about 7 milligrams per kilogram per day and a KM of 4 milligrams per kilogram per day. Children and older children will have these respective Vmaxes and KMs. So what we can do is plug in the Vmax and KM that's appropriate from a population standpoint and um, then we can put in our target concentration and solve for our dose rate. We can do that to begin with if we want to for an initial dosing regimen. The other thing we can do is once we have a certain dose rate and a concentration that we got at that dose rate at steady state, we can plug in either a Vmax or KM population number and solve for the missing number and then resolve putting in the calculated Vmax or KM and then the um, or calculated Vmax and KM put in our target concentration and come up with a new dose rate. The other thing we can do so there's this calculation method so we'll do some of that in class. We can also uh, with one concentration steady state we can use what's called the Shiner method to determine a new uh, dosing regimen and with two concentrations at steady state we can use a graphing method or the Mullen nomogram. The Shiner method is actually a nomogram as well. I think I'm going to separate these out so I'm going to stop here and we're going to hit the Shiner method in the next video.